Hi there, this is the Mom Delights channel and I'm Sherry Hayes. I'm the mom of 15 kids, been homeschooling for over three decades, and today we're going to talk about true education and how you can do history and science with kids who can't read yet or write very well. So stay tuned. First of all, we want to talk about what is education. Now, I know we know you're supposed to go to a classroom and you're supposed to have books and you read the books and you write the questions and you take the tests and sometimes you might do some field trips or some kind of an experiment or fun thing and we say this is school. This and then since it's school then oh, this is education. But what is it really? When you homeschool, then all of a sudden you have to think, what is education? What is it really? Is it really just these workbooks and these books that are boring and we don't like them? Or there's all these stacks of things you have to do, Latin and geography and blah, 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 and it gets stuck so crazy and you can't do it with anyone. Ah! Right? So what is education? If you know what education is supposed to be, then you can just concentrate on the basics. I got to tell you, if anybody watches me or knows me, I like to take complicated subjects and narrow them down to their essentials so that if I know their essentials, then I'm, then I'm armed with information and then I can flesh that out. Like if I know the skeletal structure, then I can flesh it out with things and, and then I can choose the best. Right? So let me show you this board. I've got it simplified for you. This is something I've thought long and hard about. Okay, and I have this all, I have another video on this and I also have a blog post on this. I'll try to link it below. But true education, what is it? Number one, it's, it's like a four prong, it's like four legs that hold up a table, right? Number one is a child's relation to God and man. And this means Bible knowledge discipline and manners. Now, we often have put this either to the very bottom of the of the pile or it's just not there. In fact, in public schooling, they really don't have Bible knowledge, discipline, or manners. They do have it kind of, but it's like a schoolish kind of a thing and the manners might be like cockeyed and weird, especially in these days, am I right? But when we have them home, we can put this first is the first priority. We can make sure our kids have Bible knowledge and they have discipline and they have manners as the most important part of their education. And guess what? That's what God likes better anyway. And number two, we want to give them the tools of learning and this actually helps them with number one. Number two, we want to help them to read well, to write well, to do arithmetic, have research skills, and have discernment. The reason I didn't used to include research skills and discernment, but then I realized these are part of the tools, right? If you don't have discernment in your life, you can read the best books and get all the crap out of there. <laughs> you can read, you can think it's the best book and it's just uh, propaganda. We have to teach our kids discernment. It has to be one of those tools. Uh, the Fallacy Detective is one book that's really good for that. Or you can just, just being able to discriminate whenever you watch a commercial, whenever you see um, a celebrity, and be discerning. Why are they putting this, a, a news article? Why are they wanting us to watch this or know this or concentrate on this right now? What are What is the real message behind it? So that's teaching and research skills, knowing how to research something that you want to know about and find out the best information. This is very important. Okay, number three is content. That's when we're putting in the actual facts, okay? Like of science and history and geography, all those things that they need to know, cultures, all those things. This is, the content is number three. It comes after number one and number two. We often think of school as being only number three. Like we kids need to know some history and geography and science. In fact, if if the the science people wanted it their way, we'd only do science all day. <laughs> but this is number three compared to number one and number two because if you have number one and number two, number three comes a lot easier, doesn't it? And then number four is application and life skills. Now this really shouldn't be on the bottom, really should it? But unfortunately, if we're just talking about homeschooling we need to put this down here because when we're talking about the times, like the two or three hours a day we spend with our kids, this is on the outside. This is like all the rest of their lives. So they're going to be taking number one, 
number two and number three, and then applying it to their lives. When they want to create something, when they want to enter, uh, um, be, have a skill, when they want to handle their finances, take care of their health, this is all an application life skills. Learning how to cook, how to clean, take care of little kids, that's what that is. So I think you'll agree with me. This kind of pretty much covers all of a person's education for a whole person. Now, what we're going to talk about, what we talked about last time, and we're going to continue to talk about, is number three. You see, because um, pe little kids that can't read yet, this is, you're, they're relying on us, really, to fulfill this content area in their science and their history and geography. They want, need us to read to them and show them these different things. So that's what we're really concentrating on. Next, I'll be wanting to show you how you can take and make a whole lesson that you can show an official that you're actually studying something. <laughs> well, now we can go over and try to do a step-by-step -step kind of an idea of how you can use one of these books with younger children who can't read or write that well yet and get as much out of the lesson as you can for each level. Of course, if you have smaller children, this may be even a little above their ability, but you can still read to them and show them the pictures. And if you have just a slightly old chi older child, then you guys can go over it together and the little one can just get as much as they can out of it, right? <laughs> but for your school age children that you have to be responsible for, this is a good place to start, I think. This lesson is very short and there's a lot of visualness to it. If you'll see, this is a two page spread. We're gonna go over it, okay. So this is how I do it. Say, hey, you wanna learn something from this book? This is about the ocean. It's so fun, what do you see on here? Oh my goodness. Look, what are those called? Do you know what those are called? Those are called dolphins, but look up here, look at the fins. Oh, have you ever seen in a movie where people get scared when they see those fins, but why? Are they always bad? Let's find out some more. Let's find out some more. Oh my goodness, here's some sailfish. See those? Oh, which, here we go. Here's the dolphins, look. Let's read about them. Oh, look over here what it says. It says, dolphins and whales have horizontal tails. Oh, what does that mean? What does horizontal mean? It means that their tails go like that, right? They go like this. It says, Fish tails are vertical. Oh, okay, so I guess their tails go like this, and these tails go like that. Oh, okay, so their tails go horizontal. It means that they're even with the horizon, and then the fish tails go up and down like that, right? It says, um, when dolphins' peg-like teeth are for puncturing tough fish scales. And then they have, see that right there? That's what their teeth look like, cool. And this is a dolphin fin, and this is a shark fin. What, do you see a difference? Uh-huh, yep, this is round and curvy, and this is more sharp and straight. Look at that, that is so cool. Okay, see this word? Dolphins, d all, and this says f, dolphins, dolphins. See, that's really cool, huh? Now, you wouldn't think that. This this p sound and the h sound together, they say f. Huh? Isn't that weird? Oh, okay. So this is the do bottlenose dolphin. Isn't that cool? Okay, let me read this story. Sit still now. All right. We are heading back to land after a sunny afternoon out on the water. What does that mean? They were out on the water, probably in a boat, right? I pushed the boat's throttle. What's a throttle? That's where you give it gas. So I pushed the boat's throttle to make us go faster. And suddenly, Deanna shouted, we have company. Uh-oh, that means there's something, some things come alongside them to be with him. A pod of bottlenose dolphins was swimming behind the boat, leaping and splashing in our wake. So a pod is a group of dolphins. Like you have a flock of birds. You have a pod of, of dolphins. Isn't that interesting? And it, it was leaping and splashing in our wake. What is the wake of the boat? When a boat goes through the water, it makes waves. And so the waves behind the boat are called the wake. I changed directions to get out of their way, but the dolphins stayed with us, speeding along, weaving back and forth in our water trail. Oh, wow. Can you imagine? You're in a boat and these dolphins are all around you. Wouldn't that be so much fun? I turned again. They followed and kept following until I slowed to a crawl upon approaching the shore. 
Only then did the dolphins finally swim away. Wow, they kept swimming with them. Dolphins love to leap and play in the water. Their obvious intelligence makes me wonder how they think and what they know. Like us, dolphins are mammals. They breathe through a blowhole on the top of their heads. Many people see them as kindred spirits, friendly, peaceful, and non-aggressive. But to the fish of the sea, dolphins are dangerous ocean predators. Wow. So when he's saying that the dolphins love to leap and play, I've heard lots of stories. And we'll, we should watch the video on that, don't you think? We'll watch them. But do you know that they're mammals? What does it mean to be a mammal? Well, you see, there's different kinds of creatures. There's the creatures that have the fur and everything. There's creatures that have, like, scales. And they don't really have fur or feathers. And then there's fish. And of those, those creatures are called reptiles. And reptiles do not have warm blood. They have to sit in the sun to get warm. Have you ever seen a lizard on a rock? And they give birth to eggs, not live creatures. And so when you think of dolphins, they're mammals. They're like us. They don't have fur, but they still are warm-blooded. That means their body creates their own warmth. And when they have babies, the babies are alive. They don't give birth to eggs. They give birth to babies. So those are two things that they have in common with us because we give birth to babies and we have warm blood, don't we? Now, they have to breathe through. They also breathe oxygen. They're not like other fish. You see this hole right here on the top of his head? He has to go up every once. He has to hold his breath and swim. And when he wants to come, when he wants to breathe, he has to come up to the top and he breathes through that hole in the top of his head. Isn't that so cool? Wow. Okay. Um. They breathe. Okay. I once watched a pair of dolphins feeding on a school of small fish close to shore. Whole showers of fleeing fish leaped out of the water, frantic to escape. Because remember, we just read that the f their fish of the sea, dolphins are dangerous ocean predators, so they eat a lot of fish. So the fish are afraid of them. You wouldn't think that, would you? Whole I'll read that again. Whole showers of fleeing fish leaped out of the water, frantic to escape. The dolphins sped back and forth, turning every which way to corral and snap up their terrified prey. When some of the fish leaped right out of, the, out of the surf and landed flopping on the beach, the dolphins skidded out into the wet sand to gobble them up. <laughs> then they wriggled back into the surf to chase some more. So they even went on the beach to eat the fish. So they love to eat fish, don't they? Dolphins are sometimes mistaken for sharks. Okay, we read that already. So isn't that so cool? You know what we should do? We should go on YouTube and watch some fish swimming, some dolphins swimming. <laughs> So here on, here on YouTube, I put in dolphins. I got some football. <laughs> so here, oh my goodness, let's look at this. This is 16 minutes long, and it has some really cool dolphin stuff. That's one we could look at. Let's see, uh, what we play with dolphins. Oh, that would be fun. Let's see, this is when people watch dolphins while they sleep. That's, there's the dolphins football team. <laughs> Oh, let's see. This is oh, all about dolphins for kids. Dolphins. For, let's see what this is. This is from free school. Let's see what this has to say. Uh, I think I'd rather watch something funner about dolphins. That looks too schoolish to me. What about you? Let's see. Oh, that's kind of interesting looking. Let's see. Let's let's look at that first one. I think that f that first one we saw was probably most interesting because it has actual fun things about dolphins. Let's, let's so that looks fun, doesn't it? So that would be something we could do. Okay, now that we've watched some videos and they've been so much fun, now let's do something else with what we've learned. So what I have here, dear mamas, is I have some notebooking pages. Now, these notebooking pages right here, you can get for free off of my website, momdelights.com, and I'll try to put that link below. But you can, like this is one that is, uh, it has four compartments and it has a place to write. So conceivably a child could draw a story or about something and then they could dictate to you and you could write it here. The important thing is that you don't want to stress them with having to write too much. You want them mostly be, to be encouraged. So like you might take this magic, I mean sorry, you might take this highlighter and then you could write the title like dolphins like we just did and then they could 
take their pencil and go dolphins after you and then you could say what do you know about dolphins and they could say I know this and you could put the points down here and then you could say draw four pictures about dolphins right if they wanted to draw that much some kids love to draw some don't so much this is um, one that could do about a life of someone. We don't, we're not doing that today. Here's another possibility. Let's say that you have a really young one and you could have them draw four things. You could label them as they draw them and you could just put the title up here and something, just one thing they know about it down here. That's another opposite um, thing. Now here, right here, if you have someone that is just barely being able to write, then they could draw a picture and they could write just something about dolphins. You can help them with the spelling, whatever. Um, and here's, they could put the title up here. And sometimes what I've done is I have actually put the main words about what we learned on a whiteboard and I've listed them. So if they have trouble knowing how to spell things, they can look up the whiteboard and they can like put, write dolphins and different things in there. Like they could even write just the vocabulary, like fin, um, they could write, they could, fin, fish, water, ocean, you know, they could just write that stuff down there. So that's another thing. Now, um, you could just use a plain sh sheet of white paper, and then you could take, they could draw something on it, and you could take this side of an index card and glue it, and you could write what it's about. Or you could take some lined paper or a composition book, and you could have them draw on an index card on the blank side and glue that there. And it's, I, I get the kind of paper that's reinforced. Can you see the plastic on there? And so they could just go ahead and do that. And you could clip it into a three ring binder. Or you could take all of these things and you could put them in a sheet protector and put them in a three ring binder and you could make a collection. Let me show you what we've done with these collections. So this is for 2011, but I have a number of these for over the years and I have them all matching. And um, these are just collections of all the different notebooking pages we've done, we did that year. This is for the older children, of course. This is, this is someone did Queen Victoria here. Um, let me show you some little guys. I wanted to show you, oh here, <laughs> I've even kept this kind of stuff. This is something my little girl did when she was three years old. And um, let's see, here's someone and she wasn't, she was five or something like that. <laughs> anyway, so I've got lots of different things in here collected. This is, we were studying elephants or something, and so the little tiny girls just, they colored and scribbled, and I put that in there because that was their school too, and here, my little girl's only two years old here that did the scribbles, and then her older sister helped her with it, but, <laughs> so we kept a little sample of that in here, but I wanted to show you specifically what I did, and I've got to find the page. Um, Let's see, you have all kinds of fun stuff in here. I want to show you specifically what I did with a little person, or they did, I should say, when we were studying something. And they created a whole page, and we just labeled the pictures. Now, why can't I find that? Well, here it is. Okay, if you'll see, this is uh, from a hive of busy bees, it's a character story, but this will just illustrate what a, what a child can do. Okay, at this time, this child was only, was seven years old, I believe? Yeah, she was seven. If you saw her drawing today, it would blow your mind. <laughs> but when she was seven, she was drawing this well. So what she did is she, we'd read the story and then she drew each portion of the story here and then I labeled it for her. And so this is just one example of the way a child could do this. So I just wanted to show you that. And also this, this notebooking idea, like, see, we didn't always draw everything. Sometimes we would, we would copy or print out pictures from the internet and then we would put, this is for Israel. Okay, and so then we put it in there for Israel. And you can do this too, like for the dolphins thing, you just go online and find some pictures of dolphins and your child could go ahead then and glue them on the cards or whatever you have and then they, you could write for them. And that's just as fun. And what that does is it helps them to retain things so that um, they, have, they can retain them better and also gets them more engaged and makes them feel special makes them feel like they're doing some schoolwork. And also for you, especially if you're dealing, we're, we're mostly doing this for, well, we're doing this just for fun, right? But if you have a school official that's expecting you to have something produced that shows that you did something, well, then it's perfectly fine 
to keep notebooking pages that shows that you did study this and then put them in a binder or as a portfolio for that person to see. So I hope this helps you all this that we've gone over because I think it's important. Sometimes we, we, we're so, sort of so much into theory in the homeschooling community that uh, it's hard to flesh out exactly how you do something because none of us really had much experience growing up teaching young children. We, we hardly remember our school experience and our school experience probably wasn't the best. So we have all these theories and ideas, but we just need to see how it actually works. And so I hope this helped you. I hope that you'll see that, yeah, you can do it. And you know, if you wanted to, okay, so I know that little kids have trouble sitting still for very long. So you might have gone over and read this and watched the videos and then they go and play and have lunch. And then after that is when you introduce the writing and the drawing. It's still fresh in their mind because you did it that day, but they need to run and jump and play a little bit before they're ready to sit back down and do this. And the whole idea with homeschooling is that we don't want to make the same mistakes that we're, that they're making in, in public schooling where they are killing the natural learning uh, ability of children, but they're making it to where children will hate learning. We want them to have a really good taste for learning new things and being enthused, and, and our enthusiasm will translate to their enthusiasm. So, well, thank you for sitting still and listening to me, and I hope this helps you. And if it doesn't help you, if you know someone else, pass it on to them so they can be blessed. I don't do this just from just for my own. I, I do this because I remember what it was like, and I want to bless other ladies. So, please like and subscribe. Bye-bye. <laughs>